I have an amazing throwback clip here for you. Neoconservative David Frum, who of course was part of the Bush administration, uh, tried to take on Noam Chomsky. And this looks like it's from the 80s or the early 90s. And uh, naturally, it didn't go very well for David Frum here. Let's watch and then we'll discuss. Um, they say that what the media do uh, is to ignore certain kinds of atrocities that are committed by us and our friends and to play off enormously atrocities that are, that are uh, committed by them and, and, and our enemies. Um, and, and you posit, if I could say in the Massey lectures, that there's a test of integrity and moral honesty, which is to, to have a kind of equality of treatment of corpses. Well, every, every principle. Uh, I mean, that every dead person should be in principle equal to that with every other dead person. That's not what I say at all. Well, well, I'm glad that's not what you say, because, because that's, that's not what you do. Of course it's not what I do. Nor, nor would I say it. I mean, that, in fact, I say the opposite. What I say is that we yeah. should be responsible for our own actions primarily. That's something quite but, different. But it is. But it is. But it is. I wasn't equating them. I was comparing the treatment of them. In my, if you want my value judgment, we should give much more attention to one priest who we've killed than to a hundred priests that they've killed. Notice that this is exactly the, that's exactly my message. Your method is to ignore, uh, is not, not so much to, not only to ignore the corpses, the corpses created by them, but also to ignore the corpses that are created by neither side, but which are irrelevant to your ideological. That's exactly. totally untrue. Well, well let, let me give you an example. Mm -hmm. um, that uh, that um, one of your one of your own causes that you take very seriously is the cause of the Palestinians, and and a Palestinian corpse weigh, weighs very heavily in the conscience. And yet a Kurdish corpse does not. That's not um, true at all. I've uh, been involved in Kurdish support groups for years. Um, a, a, that's actually true. That's absolutely false. I mean, just ask the Kurdish, ask the people who are involved in. I mean, you know, they come to me, I sign their petitions, and so on and so forth. And in fact, if you look at the stuff, at the things we've written, I mean, take take. Well, take Take a look. I mean, I'm not Amnesty International. I can't do everything. I'm a single university person. But if you read, say, uh, take, take a look, say, at the, uh, at, at the book that Edward Herman and I wrote on this topic. We wrote a book about this in 1979. In it, we discussed three kinds of atrocities, not two, three kinds of bloodbaths. What we called benign bloodbaths, which nobody cares about, constructive bloodbaths, which are the ones we like and nefarious bloodbaths, which are the ones that the bad guys do. Constructive bloodbaths are things like the Indonesian massacres, which we supported. Uh, nefarious bloodbaths are like Pol Pot. But we also discussed ones that nobody cares about, like Burundi. For example, we have probably the only discussion in the literature, I guess, is the massacres that were going on in Burundi at that time. Uh, we probably have the only discussion in the literature, at least that I know of, of uh, the uh, massacres that were going on in Burma. You know? Now, you know, in fact, not only is what you say not true, but it's the opposite of the truth. We went out of our way to find the kinds of bloodbaths we just ignored because nobody cares about them. Now, again, let me stress, I'm not Amnesty International. I do not have the, either the, I don't have, as a, you know, the ludicrous egotism which makes me the uh, arbiter of uh, uh, all atrocities over the world, right? I'm not trying to give an A to this country and a B minus to this country and so on. The principle that I think we ought to follow is not the one that you stated. It's the principle that we rightly expect Soviet dissidents to follow. So what principle do we expect Sakharov to follow, you say? What lets us decide whether Sakharov's a moral person? I think he is. Uh, Sakharov does not treat every corpse as a, it does not treat every atrocity as identical. He has nothing to say about American atrocities. When he's asked, he says, I don't know anything about them, I don't care about them. What he talks about is Soviet atrocities. And that's right, because those are the ones that he's responsible for. Uh, his, just, just as in, you know, it's, it's a very simple ethical point. You're responsible for the predictable consequences of your actions. You're not responsible for the predictable consequences of somebody else's actions. Now, we understand this when we're talking about dissidents in the Soviet Union, okay? But we refuse to understand it when we're talking about ourselves for very good reasons. Commissars in the Soviet Union don't understand it about dissidents. Commissars in the Soviet Union attack Sakharov and other dissidents because they don't talk about American crimes. Right? We understand exactly why that's just hypocrisy and cynicism when they do it. And we should understand the same when we do it. Now, the fact of the matter is that I spend a fair amount of effort on crimes of official enemies. There are a fair number of people in the United States and Canada uh, 
from the Soviet Union and Eastern Europe who are there because of my personal activities on their behalf. So I don't take any pride in that particular way. I just do it because I'm interested in it. The most important thing uh, for me and for you is to think about the consequences of your actions. What can you affect? Those are the ones you primarily ought to be concerned about. Of course, every course will work, but there's some that you can affect and there are others you can't do much about. You know, like I can be worried about things that happened in the 18th century, but I can't do much about them. So that was brilliant, and um, it makes perfect sense. But what's amazing is currently, in 2018, we still haven't learned that lesson. And in fact, we're doing the exact opposite. Uh, when I say we, I don't mean you necessarily, and I don't mean uh, regular people. I mean U.S. media primarily, corporate media in the United States. If you watch, it's not even hard to see, um, see this dynamic at work. So you'll often find, whether it's CNN or Fox News or the Nightly News or even MSNBC, what corporate media in the U.S. loves to focus on are the crimes of official U.S. enemies. You'll see endless coverage of that. So, for example, uh, they love to talk about Russia and talk about, oh, my God, Russia, and here's why they're a humanitarian disaster, and here's what uh, Vladimir Putin is doing domestically against his own people that's so fucked up, and here's what they're doing in Crimea that's terrible. Uh, you know, North Korea is another perfect example. Uh, we love to talk about how brutal and dictatorial and vicious um, Kim Jong-un is. And Syria is another example. They love to talk about how terrible Assad is, and oh my god, the massacres that he's committing and the atrocities that he's committing. Now, usually when they talk about uh, those countries, much of what they say is true. Much of what they say is true. Sometimes they stretch the truth. Sometimes they're flat out factually incorrect. Sometimes, you know, it's U.S. State Department propaganda that they fall for that's patently untrue. Um, but it's a mix. Usually there's a, a strong kernel of truth in what they're talking about when they talk about the atrocities of other countries mixed in with some bullshit as well. But that's where their focus is. Their focus is on the atrocities of official U.S. state enemies. Now, what Chomsky is saying is this. You have a moral responsibility as a citizen of the United States of America to call out the atrocities of your own government and, you know, you and your allies, your government and its allies, because those are the ones you can actually do something about. Those are the ones you can actually stop. You're responsible for your own actions. You're not responsible for the actions of somebody you've never seen, never met, will never see, will never meet, and will never know. You could make a moral judgment on somebody else for their wrongdoings. Of course you can. But if all you do is cast moral judgments on other people while ignoring the crimes of your own government and your own allies, well, that's just textbook hypocrisy. And ultimately, that's propaganda. And that's what corporate media does to you in the United States. They propagandize you and make you think all official U.S. state enemies, Venezuela is another one, Cuba is another one. Oh my God, let's talk about how terrible things are in these countries. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Now, when was the last time they were shrieking from the mountaintops about how terrible Israel is treating the Palestinians? When was the last time they were shrieking about how horrific it is that Saudi Arabia is bombing women and children in Yemen? They're uh, currently blockading the country. Millions of people have cholera. Millions of people are starving. They're not allowing in food and medicine. They're bombing mosques and hospitals and, and open-air markets. So when was the last time they were talking about the genocide committed by our allies? And by the way, we're aiding and abetting that by helping them bomb certain places and arming them nonstop. We keep sending them weapons. So what you'll find is when the U.S. has a rocky relationship with a government, but it's like a neutral relationship. So say China or because we do a lot of trade with them, even though we're not like really buddy buddy uh, or the Philippines, for example, with Duterte, how we have a rocky relationship r recently. Well, for those countries, you just don't talk about anything really. You just kind of leave it be. When it's somebody who's our, an official state enemy, who there's no middle ground, there's no gray area, they're just our enemy. Syria, for example. Shit on them endlessly, talk about their atrocities. When it's an ally, never talk about their wrongdoings. Ever. Like, the bombardment of Gaza, the bomb fest that... Netanyahu did in Gaza in 2014 where he killed 80% civilians. Go back and look at the coverage of that. It was nothing but wall-to-wall -wall rationalization and apologetics for all the war crimes that were being committed. Why? Because it's our ally. 
So what Noam Chomsky is saying is when it's us and our allies, that's where you should have your strongest moral judgment because you could uh, try to change that because it's your government. You have some control over it. Now, I get it. It's hard to change it, and there's a lot of corruption in our government. It's hard for one voice to be heard. But you can, in theory, try to change that and maybe have some effect. Popular movements have affected this government throughout time, whether it's the civil rights movement or, or uh, you know, women's voting rights or whatever. So your strongest moral judgments and most of your time should be spent trying to stop your own government's atrocities, whether it's torture, Guantanamo Bay being open, whether it's bombing eight different countries like we're doing right now, the illegal drone assassination program, um, the illegal war in Iraq, and the list goes on and on. So that's Chomsky's ethical judgment. You're responsible for your own country and your own actions. You're not responsible for so somebody's actions who you never met and never will meet. Uh, so... But again, you'll see, that, and this is how you know it's propaganda. U.S. media will, by and large, when it's an official state enemy, talk about their atrocities all day long. Um, when it's somebody who we have a neutral relationship with, just kind of don't touch it. Uh, like Duterte in the Philippines, very rarely does corporate media discuss how he's doing a genocide right now. Um, and when it's somebody who's our ally, pfft, always back them. Always back them. So, and it, by the way, what's so amazing about this clip, neoconservative David Frum went on to be part of the Bush administration, and they carried out the worst war crime um, of this century, Iraq. Illegal offensive war waged against a country that didn't attack us, minimum 200,000 civilians killed, did torture. So it's amazing that he's arguing with Noam Chomsky, and David Frum's point is, um, that's, you shouldn't do what Chomsky wants you to do. It's totally fine to rail against the crimes of, you know, your official state enemies. And why does he want to do that? Why does he want to rail against the crimes of official state enemies? Because then that lays the groundwork for U.S. intervention. So when all you do is talk about how evil and terrible and wrong these other countries are that are your enemies, well, then people start going, all right, well, I guess you're supposed to do something about that, right? I guess we got to be the world police and go stop them because humanitarian reasons and stuff and things and morality, bro. And that, so David Frum loves to do that, talk about the, the evils of our official state enemies so that you can make the argument either implicitly or explicitly oftentimes in his case for U.S. intervention, U.S. military intervention. And the guy who argues with Chomsky about his moral framework ends up being part of the administration that commits a, a moral atrocity and war crimes in Iraq. That tells you everything you need to know about who's right in this conversation. Moral... Ch uh, Noam Chomsky has been fighting for peace and justice and um, trying to rein in the atrocities of his government his entire life. David Frum actively helped commit those atrocities. I wonder whose moral framework and whose argument carries more weight.